Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day for a sublimation tutorial. Sublimation is a fun and easy process that we can do at home to get gorgeous, full color shirts that last forever. But there is one big drawback. Sublimation works best on white polyester shirts. But what if you really want to wear a cotton shirt? Well, there are a few ways you can do it. Unfortunately, all of the ways that I've showed you in the past involve putting something onto the shirt and then sublimating onto that thing, like iron-on vinyl, right? That means that eventually that vinyl will crack and peel and it's not going to last forever the way it would if the sublimation ink was in the shirt's fibers. But I recently learned about a new technique that might solve the problem. It's called DTF, which stands for direct to film. I actually heard about this first when folks asked me to do a tutorial on it. So I've done my research and I'm sharing what I've learned with you today. Now for this project, we need our sublimation printers. I'm using my sawgrass today, but you could also use an Epson with sublimation ink in it. That's important. It must be sublimation ink. You'll also need a heat press that works for sublimation. I'm using a Cricut Easy Press today, but you could use a Cricut Auto Press or a traditional clamshell press. Now, instead of using tr uh, traditional sublimation paper like we normally would, we're going to print onto a special film. I've tried a couple, and the one that I like best so far is this Ghidorah Transfer Film. This is a special PET film, PET, that will accept our sublimation ink and is thin enough to go through a printer. In fact, it's so thin that you'll probably need another piece of copy paper and some tape to attach the film to to prevent a misfeed. I'll explain how to do all of that later. And then we also need the hot melt adhesive transfer powder. I've had great success with this No Dreaming brand. Be sure you get the kind for white or light fabrics, not the kind for dark fabrics. I did also try the dark fabric one and I'll share more about how that worked out later in this video. Beyond this, you need the usual things, protective paper, heat resistant tape, and a lint roller but you'll also want protective gear because you do not want to breathe in the adhesive transfer powder. You need to work in a well-ventilated area and use personal protective equipment when working with DTF products and processes as fumes may be hazardous. I'll use a respirator, a pair of goggles, an apron, and some gloves when working with the DTF powder. Remember, safety first. And finally, you need cotton shirts like this white Bella canvas shirt and a sublimation design like our cardinal. I'm going to show you where to find this super awesome cardinal. Then I'll show you how to prep, print, powder, and press this amazing shirt. Step one, get a sublimation print ready. So to find this design that we're making today, you want to go to jennifermaker.com slash 446 to find it. And then you'll want to go to libraries. And uh, if you don't have a password yet, click get a password. If you already have a password, you just click enter the, the library. And then you can search the page for number 446. And then download it. And it's a zip file. So um, in this folder, there's actually different ones. Um, I, I prepared different ones. I didn't know what we would need. So here's the one that I'm going to use here. It's called Cardinal Always With You, and it's a PNG. So most sublimation projects you want, you want them as PNGs because it's going to be the best quality. So these are all high quality PNGs for you, perfectly sized for a shirt. I also made one uh, where I was experimenting with dark shirts. <laughs> we'll talk about that a little later whether you can do this on a dark shirt or not. And then I made one that doesn't have any words if you wanted to add your own, right? So we're gonna use this one right here, okay? Now to do this, we're gonna to go to Google Docs. So Google Docs is free software. Anybody can use it. You just need to have a Google account. This is what I've been doing a lot of my projects in because it's free and accessible to everybody. I recommend using the Google Chrome browser to make the best use of this software. So it's just over at docs.google.com. You can see the address right up here, right? Right there, right up here. All right, so we're gonna go to File, New, Document. And we get a new document like this. 
And uh, generally I recommend that you change your uh, margin so that you can use more of the page. So you wanna go to File, Page Setup, and change all your margins to zero. And what I'm teaching you right now works for all sublimation prints, so it's a great, awesome thing to know how to do. All right, so now we have a full blank page ready for our design. Now we go to Insert, Image, Upload from Computer, and we're gonna go find that PNG right here. Cardinal Always With You Jennifer Maker PNG, and click Open. And it'll show up on our canvas. Now let's resize it. I'm gonna make this a little smaller so we can see more of it. 50%, there we go. So I'm just changing our view of it. So to do this, to resize it to fit, uh, because PNGs are always higher quality, right? Um, and so we have to resize them to fit whatever we're putting them on. They will always come in at a higher, at larger, and then we resize them. And we want this. If they came in at just the right size, they're gonna be super pixelated, and then they're not gonna have that nice quality that we want. So to resize them, you click on the image and you kind of scroll down here and you want to click on this first of all that says in front of text click that and then it sort of makes it available so that you can resize it and then I can click right here on this arrow and I can slide it in to make it the size I want you can also come over here to these three dots and choose size and rotation but this is the easy way now this is going to go on a shirt so you know let's see what size this is right now uh, five by seven, that seems like the perfect size to me. <laughs> We're gonna do it at this size. Okay, and that's all we have to do. So now we go to, uh, we should save it. That's all we, I mean, it, Google Docs saves for you, but it's nice, you know, you give it a name then you'll know what it is later. All right, so we go to file and print. Now I'm using my Sawgrass, so if you're using your Epson, the process will be a little different. I have many videos showing this. So we're, you're gonna to get to see what it's like to print from a Sawgrass today. And I'm going to change my uh, screen right now to show everything. There we go. And I'm gonna hide my very messy desktop here <laughs> where I shoved all my icons over to the side. <laughs> okay, so here we are in our print screen. Now we don't wanna just print from here. We're using the Sawgrass. I mean, this is true if it's Epson or Sawgrass. What we wanna do is go to more settings and click on print using system dialog. Okay, so we can click on that. This is my system dialog box. Yours will look a little different. Now, if I were using my Epson, I would, and it's not connected right now. I've got one spot for my, on my desk for a printer, but I would be able to go ahead and print from this screen because I'm using my Sawgrass. Instead, I'm gonna come down here to the PDF menu. Now, I'm on my Mac, it'll be a little different on a Windows computer, um, but I have showed it in other videos, okay? So I'm gonna click on this. What you're looking for is your Sawgrass Print Manager. So, one page, page one of one, it's mirrored, it's gonna go on to polyester, that's correct, and you know, there isn't really a type paper type for what we're doing from this list, so I'm just sticking with my default type A. That might not be right, but hey, we're learning how to do this, and I might figure out a better way in the future if I decide I like this technique. Uh, but so for now, I'm sticking with type A because that has worked in my test so far. Step two, prep your area. And so let me call your attention to uh, always read your directions, right? Wear gloves, masks, and protected glasses when using Keep the powder in a cool place, okay? So this is the special adhesive powder that we're gonna put onto it immediately. So we wanna have that prepped and ready to go. And I have, it's in a jar, it's all ready to go. There's a little scoop in there for us, okay? Now we need our film. Let me show you what these look like. So I got all of this from Amazon. So it is DTF transfer. So it is a clear, transparent sheet it comes in plastic because that humidity thing is an issue right uh, but it looks like let me pull out a sheet so you can see it it looks like a clear piece well it's not really clear it's actually kind of frosted okay it's like this and the package will always tell you the print side right so this one says that this is the the side is the print surface so this side that you print on feels like it's got 
um, it's not as smooth. It's got uh, something on it, right? You can feel it. The side you don't want to print on is like super shiny and it feels very smooth. It just feels like plastic. But the side that will receive the ink clearly has some kind of coating on it, right? It's not like super rough, but it's definitely not crazy shiny. You see the difference there? So just in case you pull it out and you forget, this is, this is the side you don't print on and this is the side you print on. So because this is just a film, when I first put it through my sawgrass, I just had an error. It said like a misfeed. It's just a little too wimpy to go through the printer on its own. So I taped it to a piece of regular copy paper. So to tape it, I just put a piece of tape underneath, right? So it's on the back side of my piece of, of copy paper. And then I take my film and I wanna make sure I'm putting on the right side. This is the wrong side. This is the right side, the side that's not so shiny, that's got a little bit of a surface to it. And we're gonna just line it up to the top here, like this. Does that look good? We go, and I want to note that this is actually A4 paper, but since it's narrower than eight and a half by 11, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Most printers will accept A4. There we go, and then we're gonna tape it down. And we're, again, we're just doing this so that our printer will feed it because the film itself is pretty flimsy, right? There we go, so now it's all taped down. We have the right side. Double check that you have the right side. Here's the shiny side. We don't print on the shiny side. We print on this matte side. And when um, in most printers that have a paper tray like this, you wanna put it face down, right? It, Cause it comes through and it prints on this side. This is how I always see it in my head. It feeds in like this and then it comes out here. The print heads are here depositing all the ink, okay? so. Your printer tray will usually tell you which which uh, side to use. Okay, so let's try that one. So the printer's loaded. So we have our film in. We have our powder ready to go. Uh, the The paper trimmer is useful if you need to trim your paper or whatever you know, to make it fit. I didn't need to do that. So now we need to put on our personal protective equipment because as soon as I print that, we're going to go ahead and do the whole process. Okay. So turn on your heat press, set it to 385 degrees for 40 seconds. Uh, you see that? I've got it up there kind of, right? So 385 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 seconds is what you wanna set your heat press to. And put on your glasses and your respirator. My apron, because remember we're working with adhesive powder, right? now. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where they're not doing this, but you all know safety is a big deal to me. I'll, leave, I'll save this for the last part. Now, I also want you to get out your heat pressing mat. I'm going to use two so that I don't buckle my mat here just so I have it. And I want you to get your shirt prepared to go. Let's put down a piece of cardstock to protect our mat. Always do that, right? And... Let's press our shirt and get out the moisture. Always press your shirts before you put vinyl or sublimation or whatever on. It makes a big difference in your ability to get whatever it is that whatever adhesive you're using or anything, you want the moisture out. Okay. And for those who are curious, I'm using a Bella canvas shirt, 100% cotton. Okay. So I'm going to just pre-press this for um, like 10, 15 seconds. Oh, it's not even heated up yet. It's really close though. This is probably close enough. <laughs> okay. Now, normally when I make a t-shirt, I would crease it down the center, right? So that I get it lined up, but this design is pretty forgiving. So we're gonna eyeball it today. <laughs> All right, so this shirt is ready to go. My heat press is ready to go. So we just need to prepare the surface for doing our powder, okay? So let's just, we're gonna move this off to the side. We're gonna get a piece of cardstock or parchment paper or something. You know, you could also, I have parchment paper here. You could use that instead. You wanna protect your surface as you work, okay? Because the powder 
is going to go in other places, right? You may also want to put down some butcher paper, whatever you want to do to protect it. The other thing that I want you to be pay, pay attention to is your equipment, okay? So uh, ideally, you're going to do this away from your printer, right? Uh, because you don't want any of this powder to get sucked into your printer. It'll gum up the works. So I, after I print, I'm going to cover up my printer with a drop cloth. I'm like super safe, guys. <laughs> I don't want to mess up my lovely sawgrass printer. So if you are working right next to your printer or another piece of sensitive electronic equipment, um, cover it up, put on a sheet, drop cloth, something like that. Better yet, go away from that, right? It's powder. It's going to get airborne, right? And it might, you know, we don't want it in our lungs. We don't want it in our equipment. Step three, print and powder your project. All right, let's go back to uh, the screen so you can see it print. All right, here it is. I'm going to go ahead and press print right now. All right, here it is. This is what it looks like when it prints. It is mirrored. We want it to be mirrored. We set it immediately down onto our surface, right, that we've protected, covering up the printer so then we don't get any powder onto it. We're going to get out our adhesive hot melt powder. I'm going to pull down my, my sleeves here. You really don't want it on your clothing either. It is adhesive, okay, it's adhesive powder. so. Do your best to keep it away. Now we're gonna sprinkle it onto our design like this. You just want it on the ink and you wanna do it right away while your ink is still, you know, a little bit wet so that it sticks, I guess, that's the idea. <laughs> like I said, I am not an expert here. I am just uh, figuring this out, but this is what's been working for me to do it right away. You want to be, you know, liberal enough that you get it on there. And the edges. You don't need to go all over, okay? I mean, all over the sheet or anything like that. We have our powder on. So let's take off the excess. We don't need all of this. We're going to take it off and put it back into our jar. And I'm going to kind of bend it in the center here so that I can just sort of let it fall into the jar. Okay, tap it. You really want that adhesive powder over the entire image. And then be sure to cover up, you know, air, put that cover back onto your powder so it's nice and airtight again. Go. Now it's safe. There's still powder here. We're going to keep our gloves on and our respirator on while we continue to do this. So let me hold this up so you can see it. You see what this looks like? Isn't he cute? All right, so we want to brush off the excess here because it will transfer to your shirt. If you have a whole lot of stuff here, we can use a paintbrush. Paintbrush would be a great idea. I don't have one with me. Oh well. <laughs> but uh, I recommend a paintbrush. I was going to get one out instead of your finger. So you just want to get all the excess off the edges so that you don't have little gunky bits that glob, for the most part it's okay, I've noticed, but it will, if there's a, like a lot of it, it will. So put it onto your, your scrap paper, piece of paper there. Okay, this looks good to me. You see again what it looks like? Okay, all right, so dispose of this carefully because it's got little bits of powder onto it. I'm gonna put it right into my trash and later on I'll take care of it. Okay, now we're gonna take it off actually first. Nope, not quite yet. Now we need to heat that powder before we put it onto our shirt. So I'm gonna get out my protective mat. I'm gonna put my design right on there so that I'm protecting my surface. And I'm gonna take my e Easy Press that I have heated to 385 degrees and I'm going to hover it over the surface. We do not want to touch it, but we want to heat it so that it starts to melt. So about, now this part I'm still experimenting with, but 
you know, about five to 10 seconds, I would say. You don't want it to touch, you're just hovering over it. So you see how I'm just holding it over to start to get it to melt. And it does change a little bit. I'm sure there's an ideal way of doing this that I haven't figured out yet. <laughs> so let me show you what it looks like now. So here's what it looks like, okay? So we've started to melt and you, you does, it gets a little darker, I've noticed that you can tell that it's melted. Whether it needs less or more, I'm still working on that. Um, I think that this part is important, but we're learning together. All right, well then let's go on to our shirt. So let's take off, actually let's cut it off. You know why I want you to cut it off? Um, is because sometimes in printers, you'll get like a little black edge around the, or just a little bit on the side. And while you might not have put any adhesive on it, you might have, and then that will transfer over, right? You might have gotten a little of that powder onto it. So let's cut out our, our cardinal. And doing this is also going to help with that dreaded rectangle that we can get when we uh, sublimate sometimes, right? Now this is pretty thin. I don't know if it actually will do it. I haven't seen it do it yet, but just in case, there we go. So here is our cardinal. Step four, sublimate your DTF design. I preheated it. Let's put another piece of cardstock inside. It probably doesn't need it because this is different than traditional sublimation. It's using that adhesive powder to sublimate onto rather than, so it's just not going to go as deep into the fibers. Okay. The adhesive is going to go into the fibers, but not not in the same way. This is still just cotton, right? It still does not have the molecular structure to hold sublimation ink. That's why we're doing all of this crazy stuff. Because normally if it's just a polyester shirt, we just slap that bad baby on there and we would press it. <laughs> but cotton is formed differently and it won't retain the sublimation ink on its own. So we're helping it with the powder, okay? So we're protecting it, okay. So now we put our design on face down, just like we would do any other sublimation print. So here I have my t-shirt ruler. Remember we have a whole set of these that you can make yourself over on the blog. And line up his head right about there. Isn't he cute? With you always. Okay, so that looks great. All right, and now we protect it. We're protecting our press from any sublimation blowout. So just to recap what we're doing, we've got our, I'm making lots of noise here. <laughs> we've got our press, pressing mat on our surface. I've actually got two because I'm protecting um, slide this I don't, this look, all looks good actually well I feel like this needs to come down there we go you know I want to make sure you've got it all on there and the right there okay that looks good all right we got our pressing mat we've got a piece of cardstock under our shirt and inside our shirt we're, we're doubly protected there so we don't get sublimation ink onto our mat we have our design face down onto our shirt and I have a piece of parchment paper, or butcher paper, I mean, on top of our design to protect our heat press from any blowout. Now we press for th at 385 degrees for 40 seconds. There we go. <laughs> and who knows how this is gonna turn out. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I have definitely done this before, but live crafting, sometimes things happen. <laughs> um, one thing about this is that it is cool peel. So that was my first mistake when I was testing this is that I took it off too early because I'm thinking, oh, sublimation. Because normally with sublimation, we just peel it right off, you know, maybe after five to 10 seconds while we're letting it cool down. But 
We don't let it cool down all the way. There we go. I also want to know that I did forget to tape it. So definitely tape it. I just, I, uh, I neglected that part. So we might get some ghosting here. I don't know. You know, probably we won't because this is an adhesive powder. So it probably started to stick as soon as I started to heat it. So it's probably not going to move. So you may not need any tape at all. All right, so this is what it looks like right now, but we need to wait until it is all cooled down. So um, I don't know how long that'll take, a few minutes. I'm happy to answer questions while we're waiting. Okay, Anne says, why can't I use regular sublimation paper to print on and then use the powder with that? I haven't tried it. I'll, I know that it's possible that that adhesive will stick to the paper, but it won't stick to the film the same way. The film is plastic, the paper is paper. That's my best guess as to why we're going, we're, why we're using film instead of paper. So when the big presses, that because they're special, like sub, they're not presses. Sorry, <laughs> that's just that's my that's that's old school Jennifer talking. When the big sublimation printers that are made for DTF do this, they have special ink, they have film, and they 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 believe they still apply some kind of powder in the process, and or they might do it afterwards. It probably depends on your printer. Um, they're actually using different ink. So this is a hack. <laughs> and so it may not be as good as how it would be if you were using special DTF ink. Um, but I do not recommend that you put, you go find it and put it into your printer. I had the pleasure of talking to the folks from Heat Transfer Warehouse last night. They came to the studio to visit. It was really awesome. And we talked about this and they said that some people do try to convert their Epson printers to use DTF ink and the, um, the print, either the print heads or the nozzles or something will corrode or something after a while and the printers will stop working. So you have to replace them because they're not made for it. But the ones that are made for it are way out of most people's budget, like, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So, so this is a, this is a technique that is usually used by the big guys that we're just trying out at home to see if it will work for us, to see if we can use a cotton shirt. It's just for fun. <laughs> All right, no, you cannot use an inkjet printer instead of a sublimation printer for this. The inkjet ink will not transfer properly. So this is a sublimation technique. How are we doing? I think at this point I can take off my gloves. Still warm, I'm gonna wait till it's cool. Uh, Delia says, can you do this using laminate film? Um, I'm going to take off my mask too and my glasses. I think that we're out of the hat, the, the fume, the fume category. Do I have marks on my face? Oh, I don't. That's so, that's so bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you do this using laminate film? I don't know. It's always possible, but it might melt, right? So this plastic that we're using is made for this process. It is made for it. A DTF film. Let me get that out and show you again. Um, it is made for it. It's going to be able to withstand the high heat of your press. That is a really hot, really high, 385 degrees. Most plastics are going to melt at that, but this is this is PET material. So my guess is they're using that because it's going to withstand the heat, right? And then we're using plastic instead of paper. My guess, again, I'm not an expert at this, but my guess is that it's because the paper would not release the powder the way the plastic can. Plastic is just so much smoother, right? Okay. Uh, Melissa says, do I believe this shirt will last as long as normal sublimation? I don't know. We're going to find out because I'm going to put it into the washing machine and see what happens. I won't be able to do that live, but I will certainly report back on my blog post after I've done it to let you know. And I'll take a I'll, I'll snap a picture of it too so you can see because I high, will, highly believe in wash tests. So maybe it transfers okay, but will it actually last, right? That's what we want. Okay. I don't think that you could use transparency film. I just don't know for sure. I haven't tested all the things. If you were going to try this, I recommend that you try it with the things that we know work, right? before you start experimenting because you could actually hurt 
your press. Um, you might also release hum harmful chemicals, toxins into the air that you breathe in. And I don't want you to be unsafe. Mm -hmm. You know, plastic, plastic creates fumes when you heat it. So always be cautious. Uh, Karen says, can you use the scrap pieces you cut off? No, because they wouldn't go through the printer again. So if you wanted to make, you know, if you wanted to really maximize that film, put several designs on there. That's what I did earlier when I was testing. I put like six little cardinals on there, I filled the page, and then I just cut them off and used them in different places to test. All right. I would say it's warm. It's not cool, but gosh, it feels pretty cool. Are we ready to try this? I'm going to zoom the camera in so we can see how great or how terrible it looks. <laughs> right. All righty, let's see what happened. <gasps> Look at how beautiful that is. Look at how clear everything looks. All the letters, I was really worried about that. That looks amazing. You guys, this looks so good. I'm super impressed. This is better than my tests, actually. My tests are really small, and of course, I was learning. So um, so let's hold this up. I want to see, um, do we see any little bits here? I see something over here. I forgot to lint roll, so, you know. <laughs> I see a little crumb, some little crumbly things right here. That's probably... That do you see right here? A little, little bit of adhesive there, I think. Um, because I didn't like, I think using a paintbrush to like get in there and like get that adhesive off would help. So I see just a little, maybe a little bit here, like it's a tiny bit. It might actually just wash out. I don't know. I think that we're going to find out when I put this in a wash test, but I think that this looks really good. Look at the colors are super vibrant. Let's see how it feels. Let's get, just take all of this off. So we've just got this surface here. I have so many papers here. I'm clean off my desk a little bit here. All right, so here it is. It looks really nice. Don't forget, don't be like me and forget to lint roll. <laughs> I get distracted when I'm in a live video. So I see a little smudge here. I don't that I don't know if that's from anything I did or not. It might just wash out. And a couple little dots here. So how does it feel? Ooh, this is interesting. So it doesn't feel, it does not feel like the shirt, right? I can feel the fibers of the shirt. I actually can feel, it feels like, this is fascinating. It feels like a shirt I've seen at the store. It's got a, let's see if I can hold this up so you can see. I feel a little, it's not plasticky. I don't know what it is. It's not plasticky, but it's smooth now. Let's see if, if there's any like sheen on it in the light. Nope, there isn't. It does not shine at all. So, but there's also like, is there an edge to it? There's not an edge, but it's not, so it doesn't feel like vinyl, but it's like something between vinyl and the shirt. So there is a sense that there's something there, although I cannot really hear where like there's not a lot of color. It's just a little bit, I can feel the shirt there. So there's something on it. And my guess is the powder um, melted and turned, I don't know what the powder is made out of guys, <laughs> um, but it, it did something. Well, all I know is that it looks really good and it works, right? Okay, so let's switch back here. I should, uh, no, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it like this. I was going to put it on my little dress, my little, you know, body thing, but it's fine. We'll keep it like this. Here we go. All right, so the question now is how well will this last? Um, I'm going to put it into the washer and dryer when I get home today when I'm editing the video and then I'll put the results in uh, I'll, or uh, I might not be able to actually. It's a pretty it's a pretty short turnaround between now and when I have to get the video out. So they might just show up on my blog post, right? So we'll see, I'll, I will do it and there'll be some kind of update and they'll probably be on the blog post. Maybe I'll put it in the, the description of the video. Maybe I'll do an entirely other video. Um, one that's maybe a little easier to follow where I didn't forget to lint roll and tape and all that good stuff. <laughs> Thankfully, it worked out, right? It's still it's still really good. Um, 
uh, fate was on my side today. It is not always that good. Okay, so now I'm sure, um, let me check for questions, in fact, because I, I know that I've got a question and you might also. Okay, um, I see some questions here. There's a tip. Uh, this is an awesome tip. Don't let your pets in the room while you use anything that has powder or fumes to keep them safe. Absolutely. You're going to have to put your dogs and your cats, any other pets you might have out of your room while you're crafting. This is true for other crafts as well, right? If you're doing resin crafts, same thing. You need to use personal protective equipment whenever you're doing anything like that. So always be safe. Thank you very much for letting me, reminding me of that so I can tell everybody. Okay. Could you use, heat it with a low temperature heat gun? I don't know. I haven't tried that. That seems like a great idea, but since we've got that heat press out anyways, why not just use it, right? It wasn't difficult to hover it over. If you have um, like the Cricut Auto Press, you could just bring it down. You just don't close it. Um, same for a traditional clamshell press. You would just bring it down. You just don't close it. It'll just hover over it. It's probably easier to hover over it when you're using a press like that. It was just a little bit too big for my space to use. Uh, can you use a plastic container for the powder? I don't see why not. It comes in plastic, right? So this one came in a bag. This one came in this bag right here and I transferred it because I did not trust myself with this bag. It's just like a little zip top. So I put it into a glass container with a little scoop. Um, but this um, brand, and I want to talk about this too, this Ghidorah brand, it comes in a plastic bottle. So you can certainly do that. Now this brand, you can actually get um, for white garments and for black garments. So I'm like, ooh, you could use this for black garments, like black shirts. I need to try that. So I did. Would you like to see the results? I would like to show them to you because I was super excited about the idea that we could use this for black because that's like a big uh, issue that we have. So let me switch over to my overhead so you can see. All right, so these are my tests. I actually did two. Let me show you the first one on the black. So this is the first one. <laughs> Just looks like black to me. That's it, right? Did not work. So this is the, the black powder, right? So you would, my guess is that this is for the people with the fancy presses and maybe some white sublimation ink, which I don't have and I really don't want to play with. I've heard like just horror stories about trying to get that to work. Um, that's my guess is that this is intended for that. I'm just guessing. So I thought, well, what if I used the stuff that's for white, right? For the white shirts. Um, would it look any different? So I did try that. And this is actually what I got. So interestingly, it did actually transfer better. I can see it. I don't think it's good enough still, but you never know, right? If your shirt is not crazy dark, but I mean, cause it clear, you can see there's a difference here. Like, this is all black, but this, um, it's not entirely transparent either, right? This would, if this had been just sublimation ink, on this like this is like a dark gray Heather shirt, it would have just um, kind of been invisible is actually what it would have been. It wouldn't have even really looked like this. It would have been maybe a faint hint of a bird. If you looked close and squinted, <laughs> it wouldn't have looked like this. So this is interesting that it even looks like this. So, but nonetheless, I would say this is a fail. So don't be, don't be tricked by the idea that you can get the black powder stuff and use it on a black garment because I think you need a fancier press than what we're doing at our at home. Okay. <laughs> but hey, I make mistakes so you don't have to, right? <laughs> uh, okay. Is there a way to turn the Cardinal PNG file into SVG format so we can make it with HTV? Well, let's take a look at it so you can see why that's going to be tough. Uh, this is watercolor. It is all gradients, right? So um, you could have a cart, you know, it, you could make it, but it's going to be like all red or all black or something like that. You know, uh, in a vector, like an, in Adobe Illustrator, I could redraw it to do it, but it's going to look totally different than this. It's just going to be red, some brown, some black hair here and here. It's not going to look the same. It's not going to have this pretty 
uh, look to it. Now you totally can use it with printable vinyl, however, printable heat transfer vinyl, right? The transfer sheets, like I showed you with the other projects. So you could do that with your inkjet printer. So that's definitely an option if you want this lovely watercolor cardinal, because it's very specific. You're not going to be able to recreate this with vinyl. And that's one of the really cool things about sublimation is that we there, there's a lot of colors going on here. Probably at least 256 individual colors in this one image, right? We've got reds and oranges and purples, blacks, browns, oranges, all of them, and then variations in between. So that's one of the things I love about uh, sublimation is why you'll almost always see me doing images like this because they're so pretty. <laughs> Can you reuse the cardstock? If it doesn't have a hint of sublimation ink on it, yes. If there's even the suggestion that it might have some, no, because if you do, that will heat back up and it'll um, sublimate into your garment or your surface or whatever it is. I usually use a clean sheet of cardstock just to be on the safe side, but you can decide for yourself. Do you think the DTF film would work with infusible ink markers on the maker? I don't know, but probably, but you'd have to put the powder on as you go. So you'd really want to be protecting yourself, right? Cause you want to have all of your protective stuff on. I feel like it might work, right? But you, you needed to get that powder on while there's still some moisture <laughs> for it to receive the powder on, right? So, and usually with markers, like, oh, did you, are you going to put it onto your Cricut? Yeah. I mean, you might be able to just put it onto your Cricut and have it draw it. But if it was like a really big design, it might dry out. The thing about printing is, is that, oh, we can uncover this. We wouldn't want to leave this covered up with plastic. It's got vents and stuff. It needs to breathe. Um, the thing about the printer is that, you know, it comes out and then we can immediately work with it. It's like pretty quick. Sawgrass, in fact, is very fast. I have I am not using my Epson today because my Epson has a clogged yellow line. I was working on fixing yesterday, but I wasn't going to take any chances today since we're doing a live video. Um, so I got my sawgrass out and I was printing with it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this machine, guys. It is so much faster than the Epson. It like I, I usually use the Epson Eco Tank because most of you are using that too. But, um, so I tend not to use this, but I, I gotta say, I really prefer the sawgrass. It is no clog lines. It maintains itself. It's faster. The, the ink, sorry, I got off on the track here. It's just like, it's, it is pricier, but oh my gosh, it was so easy to refill because I ran out yesterday too. Okay. A little aside there. The sawgrass is an awesome machine. All right. Um, let's see here. What is the point of using sublimation ink? Can regular ink be used? You are essentially making a heat transfer, not a sublimation transfer. Yes. Okay. I agree with that. However, I think, though I'm not positive, but I feel like that adhesive is also going into the fibers of the shirt. So I don't feel like it's just a heat transfer vinyl that we've created <laughs> essentially here. I mean, it's possible that it has similarities to that, but the adhesive is going to sink into the fibers and it's very likely it's sunken more than just a vinyl adhesive. I don't know for sure though. The heat, the wash tests are really gonna be our indicator of whether this is a viable uh, practice or not. Now, as to why we're using sublimation ink and not regular ink, that part matters. That powder is for sublimation ink. It's still sublimating into the powder, right? And that powder is melting into the shirt, you see? Now, regular ink and an inkjet printer, that is not sublimation ink. It will not change into a gas and then actually sink into the powder and into the shirt, the way sublimation ink can. They're different kinds of ink, so it does make a difference. Okay, cool, what does the reverse side look like? Let me show you. In fact, I can show you some tests while we're at it. All right, let's turn this inside out. I, I did some tests on this shirt, so we can see what the inside looks like. This is what the inside of the shirt looks like. 
you can see that it's it's definitely not just sitting on top here it looks like it has um there's it's gone into the fibers i would say let's compare it with a sublimation shirt i want to see what it looks like because it's it's this this shirt is not so transparent that i would just be able to see through it like that so let's see because that would be an interesting indicator too like what does it look like with a well these are different cut these are different fibers this is cotton right and this is polyester but so you see how it actually looks fairly similar we can see that on the back side that it looks like it's gone into the fibers what you say um yeah so i'm going to be really interested to see but the powder itself we could just wash away who knows <laughs> i don't know i don't know what's going to happen uh, let me show you a couple tests i did when i was learning so that you can see some things to avoid I did some little ones at the bottom here. Here, this is uh, one of my first ones. You see how it's like, it's um, it's not so great. You can, I mean, it's not bad. You can actually still read it and everything. It's tiny, look at that with you always. You can still read it. I'd, you might still be happy with that, but it feels rougher. And this is when I was being impatient and I'm like, ooh, it's ready, peel. <laughs> and it was, it clearly was not ready, right? So I definitely peeled off some stuff with it. And uh, so it's not, it didn't, it didn't um, stay on the shirt because it was still hot. And this is the second one I did and I didn't have enough powder near his head here, right? So there wasn't any place for the sublimation ink to go into. So it looks like this. So it's actually pretty good until we get up here. So those are, those are my two mistakes so far. Now, I don't know how well this DTF shirt is going to hold up in the wash, and that's very important, but I'll be testing it, and I'll keep everyone updated over on my blog post at jennifermaker.com 446. If you have any questions, please leave them below this video or ask over in my awesome sublimation group at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.